Yeah, we were just talking about warfare and talking about dealing with being honest with ourselves, identifying the difference between those pronouns um, of you do this, I do this. And in the book, you talk about being honest. Let's be about let's be honest about what we hear. But when we actually have those voices of condemnation, we recognize that it has a demonic root. How do how do you go about confronting that demon or demons? First, I want to find out what the level of the involvement is. Here's what I mean by that: uh, demon demonization, demonids, or manos, or uh, if you want the participle, demonids of my, if you want the verb, it, it was talking about demon control. You know, it's, 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 it's demons causing passivity. That's the basic etymology of the word, demon cause passivity. It can be very, very strong, or it can be something where it's fairly light. Let me tie this in. That I'm, I'm, I'll get your question. I hope I... Okay. Be real careful with it. In Ephesians 4, 26, Paul says, uh, you know, sin, but don't let the sun go down on your anger. Anger. You're giving the devil words, a foothold. That's right. Deal with your sin. I've told people you could put anger, lust, immorality, envy. You could put anything, fear, unforgiveness, you can put anything in that slot you want. The idea is deal with your sin. Don't let it stack up. Why? Verse 27. You do not want to give the devil foothold, handhold, opportunity, the different translations. Tapas, it's a Greek word. It, it meant it was a military term. Travis, it was a military term. It was used when it was talking about giving away a place, a space, a territory, or ground that is supposed to be yours, but you give it to your enemy. So Paul was very aware when he says, don't give the devil, he says to who? Tapas, a place, a space, a territory to control. It's not rightfully theirs. If you give it to them, they're going to put their flag on it until you're strong enough or find someone strong enough to throw them off the hill, and now it's, you know, now it's somebody else's. So Christians, deal with your sin. Do not give the devil that place, space, or territory of control. Well, when I talk about paradigms, I spend a chapter on that, the book, and then in the new chapter, one of those new chapters, chapter 12, I deal quite a little bit with it again, I think. But whether you're talking about what I, what people will typically say is oppression, I'll say it's still talking about top loss, still talking about giving a place, a space, or territory of control, but it's very light. It's just irritating. You know, someone gets a goofy thought. Uh, until that missionary explained to me, I said, uh, you know, who really, uh, we, we called a missionary who worked with this for 60 years, you know, back to where, how this started. George Birch was his name. He was a missionary with Ruth Graham Bell. He and his wife worked with Ruth Graham Bell and her, her husband in mainland China. They were thrown out of China in 48, went to Indonesia, Worked 18 years there, so 30 years overseas, and then he pastored a White Rock Baptist Church uh, in, in British Columbia for 30 years. So I met him as an old man, but he was sharp. Mm. And, and he was the one that said, you didn't get much of an education. I'm going to give you an education on warfare. Here's how this stuff works. He says, you know, it's funny. He says, here they, they say, well, it's all about idolatry and stuff like that, guns and fruit trees, and, and we recognize it overseas. And he looked at me and says, Carl, he goes, people have their idols here too. I mean, it's their car, it's their job, it's their wife, it's their looks. He goes, idolatry demons don't care what it's in. They just care if they've got something that moves Jesus to the back. You know, as long as Jesus is to the back, they move something. Here, an education there. But so the oppression, I, I, I liken that to the arrows that all of us catch. I don't know any, you're not told anywhere in scripture that Satan or his demons cannot shoot arrows at you. And when I've had people say, I walk so close to God that they wouldn't do that because if they were shooting at me, it would mean I was out of the will of God. I would say, then you go back to Matthew chapter four and explain to Jesus how you are more righteous than him. <laughs> if you're more righteous than Jesus, and I'll accept your explanation. But, you know, some tells me that uh, you have a higher impression of your righteousness than God does uh, because you're not God incarnate. And they were bold enough to attack Jesus 
why in the world would they be afraid of you? Because you go to such and such a church, you had such and such a theological, you know, paradigm that you're faithful. I just, that's nonsense. But at any rate, the oppression, that's the arrow. You know, you're fat, you're stupid. Most of that you can just blow off. You know, we catch stuff and it's like, look at that woman. And, and, and pastor, what you would say is you would say, yeah, but she's not worth my marriage, my wife, my character. That's stupid. I don't know where that came from, but I walk on. In other words, it's not debilitating, it's irritating. Hmm. But when you get to what the paradigm would call possession, and I, I don't use that because people always assume possession means ownership. And I said, demons don't own anything. Demons are squatters. There's one creator. Everything else is part of the creation. Christ is creator. He's the one who delegated authority to us. So I don't care what a demon's position is. His authority has still been delegated to him from part of the creation. So my authority delegated to me from the creator is greater than the authority of a created being giving, delegating his authority to his little buddy. So Christians should win instead of playing the role of the victim. Now, when Christians are willing to live like the victim, they just make the job easy for the other side. I can't, I always, I never, I always lose. I'm the special case. I'm just the exception. Oh, Pastor Carl, you've got to stand for me because I can't stand for myself. Uh, when you're on the bottom looking up, give me a call. We're done. Well, I can't stand for you. If you're the one that opened the doors to demonic uh, intrusion, you're the one that has to be willing to say as a Christian, I shouldn't have to put up with this and I want it to stop. You can have friends pray for you all day long, but as long as you're embracing it and allowing it, they're not going to volunteer to leave you alone. So if it's light, it's the arrows. I talk about offensive prayer. And if you want me to send you an outline I put together for the church, one time the church asked me, put together an outline on offensive prayer for us, which I did. I've got it. Send me, I've got your email. I could yeah. just send it to you if you want it. But at any rate, I'll say offensive prayer will take care of oppression. In other words, you get to, oh, no, I'll say me, because I've been picking on you. I'll say, I get the thought of, uh, of, uh, you're, you're a horrible pastor. You've got nothing worthwhile to share. And you're just going to be a disappointment to the congregation. So why do you want to preach? That thought would have had me either thinking, I better get to bed. Uh, man, I must be tired. Uh, really, God, are you saying that I'm not preparing the right scriptures? Maybe I need to go back over and trash the notes and start again. Or I mean, Spirit of God, if that's what you're telling me. I, I, but See, I would, I would catch that kind of thing. And my missionary friend said, you don't understand what that is, do you? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, you, you've never been talked to about demonic accusation. I said, never. We just made fun of the demonic stuff or ignored it. I want you to pray like this, Carl. It's offensive prayer. The next time you hear you're a horrible pastor, you can't share one single thought that makes any sense to anybody, you're a disappointment. I want you to pray instead of offensively or defensively saying, God, hide me from whatever those arrows are trying to do. I don't want to get hurt by them. It's like a Psalm 27 or Psalm 18, God, hide me. There's, you can pray defensively. That's not wrong. But he said, start praying offensively like Psalm 35. Uh, Lord, contend against the ones who are contending against me. Hey, when my enemy lays down a net to catch me, catch him in his own net. 58, when my enemy shoots arrows at me, return his arrow and shatter his teeth with his own arrow. Psalm 109, Psalm 83, there's so many. Jeremiah 18, 18 to 23, Nehemiah 4, 4 and 5. Instead of saying, God, I'll see if I can outrun the arrows, I pray, Father in heaven, if, may not be, maybe I'm just not concentrating, but if that's a demon that's trying to discourage the prep I'm doing for this sermon and telling me I'm an idiot, but you just beat the snot out of that sucker and tell him I'm off limits. And I thank you in Jesus Christ's name. I told that young lady where she would hear she's fat and ugly. I said, you ever catch that one again? You say, Lord, that's a demon telling me I'm fat and ugly because they want to draw me back into an eating disorder. Would you just beat the tar out of them? Will you just humiliate them? And will you undermine the underminer? Uh, you know, I can do that. Yes, you can. If the only thing a person's dealing with is just the light oppression, It'll just stop. I've had persons say to me many times, I started praying offensively and stuff that would have been two hours of navel gazing and disappointed myself. It just stops. I say, welcome to warfare. Hmm. Now, 
if they work with the offensive prayer and they'll say, Carl, it's like something got kicked off the front porch, but now it's on the back porch, banging on the door saying, Hey, I'm not going anywhere. And you're not getting rid of me because you invited me here. And I, you know, I'm not volunteered to go pray again. See, it'll say, see that offensive prayer doesn't work. Well, obviously it worked to kick them off the front porch. But what they're saying is I'm still on the back porch. So I'm stronger than Jesus. You see, you bet on the wrong one. So Lord, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, if that's a demon just went to the back door and he's trying to tell me that he's stronger than you, would you just kick the tar of that sucker and tell him just shut up and leave me alone? Thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Carl, it stopped again. Welcome to warfare. If they have a right to be there, if that topos opened up places, spaces, or territories, so they have a right to be involved with you. It isn't just the external arrow that you catch occasionally. This is something where that door was open wide enough that that demon says, you have given us a place, a space, or a territory to control. To think that they're not going to use whatever that was to try to keep expanding. You know, in the military, it would be the old beachhead. Then you try and keep, you know, reaching into other areas. So it's like, uh, you, gave me, uh, you gave me your sexuality. Uh, I've got the bedroom, but now I want the kitchen. And now I want the pool room and now i want the well i want this to stop yeah you can't make this stop i'm stronger than you you're a lousy christian oh well what if i try and make it stop well then we'll kill your loved ones <gasps> well if you're a real christian you just carry your you just carry your cross you're obviously not a real christian because a real christian would never speak evilly towards a mean towards a demon because you're just supposed to bear your cross and love even your enemies are we your enemies so just don't say anything and live with it Oh, I guess I'm doing the Christian thing by just living with this because I wouldn't want to look like I was being offensive to a demon. I'm saying, screw that, Travis. I'm saying, Jesus told him, get lost. I can too. So if a person has said, I've been real consistent with that offensive prayer, and instead of stopping it, it's like I just get antagonized and mocked. Like it just keeps coming back. I'll say, if tapas has been given, there's a place or a space, they have a right to that until that's taken back and resurrendered to Christ. So well, I've confessed my sin so many times and all they do is say, you can, keep, you can keep confessing your sin, but you're still a loser. It's like, it doesn't seem to stop. That mental war keeps going. I'll say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to recognize that not only do you need to confess a sin, you know, that opened a door, but that Ephesians 4, I want you to ask God to cancel any permission demons have taken advantage of you through that sin. The cancel the ground, the ground, the space, the place that they held. So instead of saying, God, I confess my sin and now I rebuke you, demon, and the demon says, screw you, I'm not going anywhere. I say, Father in heaven, I confess my sin of, you know, whatever it was. I stole the bubble gum and I knew I was wrong. Please, please forgive me. And Lord, if I gave ground, that place or space to the demon, if this was more than just a passing arrow, I resist them. I don't want anything to do with them. Would you please cancel any permission demons believe they have to bother me? Because I want them to know they're intruders and they're not here with my permission. I want nothing to do with them. Thank you in Jesus' name. Now, when you tell a demonic spirit to get lost, they realize my right to be here is gone. So I can't keep on with the battle unless I can just bluff the Christian out of it. Well, that was a dumb prayer. That's never going to work. Or, you know, oh, then I guess I'll stop too. How do you know it wasn't going to work? You got bluffed out of it. But assuming there was ground that was given, to remove the ground, there needs to be the forgiveness of the sin that opened the door and then asking God, retake that ground. I surrender that back to you. The ground that the enemy took over through that pop us, that place or space. Would you take over that place or space? I don't want them thinking they're welcome here at all. So, if I'm having to go directly because the offensive prayer, it's more than just the, the oppression. They've actually got a spot. Then I need to have a plan B. It's not that it's a better plan, a worse plan. It just depends on how much heat are you taking. For the one that says it's debilitating, you talk about an arrow I get shot with, I get hit with an avalanche of arrows. They never stop. If I put my shield, Paul says I have up here, I get hit in my legs. If I put it down at my legs, I get hit in my head. If I put it in front of me, I get hit in my back. I throw it over my shoulders, I get hit in my chest. It's like, Carl, they never stop. 
that's typically someone who in their own way is explaining this isn't just a casual thing that happens once in a while as an annoyance. This is something that's got me talking about killing myself and thinking God hates me and, and, and you know, what's the use of trying? So, you know, you ask about ground rules. The single most important thing that I believe I do in, in the dealing, and I've had many, many people that work with this. That, I mean, I've had so many emails and stuff saying, man, I love that, that ground rule thing because it turns dealing with demons from a circus where there's yelling and screaming into a conversation just like we're having. I have not had a screaming match with a demon since 1983. Now they just shut up and do what they're told because I lay those ground rules down. The ground rules are saying, this is how it works. My authority is greater than yours because my boss is greater than yours. And the only thing you're going to do is obey and leave. I'm not putting up with any of your nonsense. This is not going to be a circus. It just ends up scaring the person anyway. And then they just don't want anything to do with any of it because it looks like the characterizations you get of, of, the, of the exorcist where the exorcist ends up getting beat up by the demons, you know, kind of like the Acts 19. That's because they didn't know what they were doing and they weren't Christians. But I, the two most important things, I'll say one, you learn to stand on your delegated authority. Luke 10, there's several places. I already mentioned the 2 Corinthians 10 about our battle, our warfare, the Ephesians 6, you know, the armor. But I like the Luke 10. I have given you the authority. This is Jesus to the 70. I have given you the authority to tread upon the serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. They shall not harm you. Do not rejoice, however, because spirits are subject to you. Rejoice because your name is recorded in heaven. I have suggested that anybody whose name is recorded in heaven has been told that they have been delegated authority. That's what the verse says. That's why the disciples had no fear. That's why the 70 weren't afraid. That's why the Luke 9, when it wasn't part of the 70, it wasn't part of the 12. And Jesus says, leave them alone, let them do it. They had understood probably from Jesus' teaching somewhere. You're on the side that wins. Demons are on the side that loses. You don't have to put up with it. Now, if you choose to put up with it, like you go back to athletics, you can have a bad team beat a good team if the good team's convinced that they can't, you know, they're not going to win. Um, you know, you let bad teams into a game when you start letting you play around with them for a while, and that just emboldens them. They start thinking, maybe I can win this game. Playing with demons doesn't work. They need a right hook to the head that just puts them down saying, this is, this is, we're done with this. So what I've said is when you understand your delegated authority, so it's not me, it's not my gifting, it's not my personality, it's delegated authority that was given to everyone whose name was written in heaven. That's what the text says. So why should I be afraid when I'm on the side that won? Then secondly, I lay down these ground rules. And the ground rules, Travis, are just a way of, I, I call, I say, I, I worked with a pastor uh, earlier this week, pastor that had been, you know, long story. He is free. He just said, I read your book. I knew this was real. I knew I've been in the middle of it. I've had stuff I've never shared with anybody. I want to deal with it because I want ministry to be a joy again. And so I just feel so bound up in my head sometimes. And he looks at me like, are you going to believe that? I said, you don't know how many pastors and missionaries I've worked with. You know, what I said to him, Travis, I said, who would you shoot, who, who would you shoot your, your good ammo at? Someone that can't hurt you or someone you recognize as an enemy? Yeah, but why me? I'm a pastor. I want to be serious. It's always a fight. I go, maybe because they realize you won't roll over. Hmm. I would save my best ammo for someone that really wants to fight. Someone that's willing to roll over, they're already doing what I want. So I say, it's actually, he says, it's a compliment. Oh, you don't have to invite it. But yeah, the fact that they take you serious enough that they're saying, we got to shut you down and shut you up because you're not going to shut up. I find that far more consistent with people that are deeply committed to Christ than ones that could care less. Why bother them? Why wake them up? Mm -hmm. So at any rate, what ground rules do is I told them, I said, pastor, they just shove the walls in like this. So the only thing that's left is like, I, I don't know if I can do it with my hands here or not, but it's just like this little box. Yeah. Here's how you're going to operate. Here's what you can do. Here's what you can't do. And you're going to be leaving upon command. And, and Travis, I've, I've had demons say to me, get it over with. Where in the 80s, when I first started, I would hear, who are you to tell us to do anything? We rule the world. You're fools. You Christians don't know what you're doing. I've been at it now a while. And so now I'll typically, if they say anything, it'll just be, just get it done with. 
just get it over. In other words, we know you're on the side that wins. You know, we're not going to convince you that you don't have the authority to make us go. So just get it done with. 